assuming most of you are using Capistrano for deployment of your Rails app. Now, I don't know about you, but it took me a while to really grasp how Capistrano works and exactly what it is doing in the background and what all the magic is. Now, what really helped me is when I started writing my own Capistrano tasks instead of just relying on recipes from the, from the web. So that's what I want to show you how to do today, how to make your own Capistrano tasks. First, a little bit of a background in how Capistrano works. The deployed directory structure is really made up of just three things, releases, current, and shared. Now, releases is just a folder that holds each deployed release version of your application. Current is just a sim link which points to a specific release of your application saying that is the current version of the app. And shared is just uh, holds all the files that need to be shared across each release. For example, your log files, you don't want to regenerate those every single deployed release. You want to share those across them so that um, they're always pointing to the same log file. Now normally when it's time to deploy your application, you just run the cap deploy task, and this really does three things. It runs deploy update code. Um, this will actually just basically check out a new release um, and add it to your releases directory. And then it will run deploy symlink, and this will basically generate the current symlink file here, which points to that latest release that was just checked out. And then it runs deploy restart, which will restart your web server. Now this restart task is really what uh, one of the first things you need to customize because depending on what web server you're using to run your Rails app, you need to change this behavior. So let's do that first. So here's a simple deploy.rb file. And what we want to do here is override that restart task um, to change the behavior and restart our web server. So we can do that by calling namespace uh, deploy so that it, this task, uh, restart task is inside that deploy namespace so it'll override that deploy restart task. Um, and then in here, we just want to restart our web server. So let's say we're using Passenger here, and to do that, we just need to um, generate a restart.txt file in the current or uh, temp directory. And to do that, we can call the run command, which will execute a command on the remote server. We can call touch current path, and then the temp restart.txt file. And that'll actually restart our, um, sort our web app in Passenger. Now, this current path variable is just going to point to the current symlink file, basically, in, um, in your deployed path. So this will be the current release. So now each time we run the cap deploy command, it'll end up on when it gets to deploy restart, and we'll use our task, which will restart the web server the way we want. Now let's try something else. Let's say we have some files that we need to share across releases which are not in our Git repository. For example, we have a database.yaml file, which is a config file, and that holds our database password and such, so we don't want to put that in our repository, but it still needs to be in each release. So how do we generate that file each time? So what I like to do is use the shared directory that Capistrano gives us and customize this the way I want to, so I can maybe add a config database.yaml file, and then each time I deploy a new release, just symlink to this specific file. And so I'll create a, a task to do that. Okay, going back to our deploy file, we can create a new task here called symlink shared. And then in here, we can just run the command to generate symlinks. Um, so we can create a new symlink from the shared path to the config database YAML file in there, and then that will um, go to the release path config database YAML file. So this will actually point to the the release that we just deployed. Um, and you may be wondering why we're using release path here instead of current path, and that's because uh, the current path points to that symlink, that current symlink file. Remember, uh, we don't want to point to that because it may not be generated yet. Pointing to the release path is just a safer way to ensure that um, it's the one that was just checked out from the code. Now currently this task won't do anything for us here. We have to run it manually because it's not in our um, deploy setup. So 
there's no place in here where it's actually running that simlink share task. What we want to do here is just add it, insert it into here so it's calling simlink shared right after we update the code when we call cap deploy. So to accomplish this, we can use the after method in Capistrano and just say after deploy update code, we want to run deploy simlink shared. So now every time we deploy, it'll run the simlink shared task, which will link up our database YAML file um, before it actually finishes the deployment and restarts the server. I want to finish up with one more thing. Um, a lot of times I have in my application files which are either really large or that change frequently depending on the database entries. And I don't like to keep those kind of files inside of my repository. I like to keep them completely separate. And that means I need to link these up every time I deploy. So I can do this very similar to how I do the database YAML file. And what I do is I actually have an assets directory under the shared path. And then this goes to the public slash assets directory uh, in the release path. And that will actually, it's almost like an images directory, but it's just kind of miscellaneous files that are usually large or closely related to the database, uh, database records. So now each time we deploy, it'll automatically link up this assets directory so we don't have to stick these files inside of our repository. Now let's go one step further and say, for example, we want to manage this assets directory on our local development server computer, and then we can sync th those files up, this directory up, on our deployed server every once in a while. Well, for doing that, let's just make a new Capistrano task. Um, I'll just paste in some code here to create a new task called assets, and then well, we, can, we can use a system command here. This is a Ruby method, not Capistrano specific, that'll just run this command on our local computer here, not our remote server. So it's, it's similar to run, but it's running this command on our local computer, not remotely, um, wherever we call the cap command from. And basically, we're just going to use rsync here to rsync our public assets directory on our local computer to the deployed server um, so we don't have to manually copy and upload files to it. Oh, and by the way, this task will not run automatically when you deploy. You just have to call cap deploy assets to run this task uh, manually. But I actually prefer it this way just so I have more control of when that rsync command gets run. So that's pretty much it for this episode on creating your own custom Capistrano tasks. Now, of course, all these tasks might not fit perfectly for your needs of your application. I encourage you to create your own uh, to, edit, to do whatever you need for your deployment because every deployment situation is different. But hopefully, I give you enough information here to make your own. Now, one thing I did not do here is add some documentation to the tasks, which I always encourage you to do. So let me just snap my fingers real quick here. And there we go, there's some documentation. If only it was that easy, huh? Well, that's it for this episode. See you next time. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.